would you suggest to take some time to get right in the corporate space first before you go entrepreneurship? Mm, that's a good one. I For me, I feel like yes, because it gives you that structure. I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs, they lose because they don't have structure and discipline. Mm. Structure and discipline is the most important thing. That's why I can get up at 6 a.m., work out, go to work 9 to 5, 5 to 9, do some more like my own business stuff. Like, Because I have that structure and playing football, college football, that helped put me in that mindset of just like, you got to consistently go. And we always on the schedule. So I think having that corporate schedule will allow you to have the mindset like, okay, 9 to 5, I might not have a job, but... I got to do my business. Because a lot of people, they don't put the time in their business. You got to put eight hours plus in mm, your business facts. to be good. So you got to put that same time. Whereas a lot of entrepreneurs that I know, they might wake up at 12. They would do a business from 12 to 3. And then 3 to 8, they BS. And it's like, bro, y'all got to have some structure, some discipline to actually do your business as if you have a 9 to 5. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you suffer from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Yo, what's poppin'? You know what time it is? Your boy, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. We in the building. My guy, Keyson is here, Katie Consultant. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here, Jersey City. Yeah, Jersey City. We what in the you know building? about Jersey City, baby? I don't know nothing about Jersey City. <laughs> nothing at all. I've never even been. I've probably been to Jersey once and maybe a couple other times going to New York. Okay. I don't know nothing about Jersey City. Well, tell me about it, man. How is it, though? Jersey City's tough environment, bro. It's uh, streets, you know, city life. You know, mm. you got drugs, scammers, everything. But I feel like the people that stay focused and uh, don't get bored become successful. So I think that's happening with me. Too. What's the environment like? I feel like Jersey City just sounds like when I hear it, it just sounds beautiful. It sounds like a bunch of houses, like Where? big houses and just wow. like space and grass, grass out front. City. Yeah. Jersey City, bro. I, uh, it's like a mini New York. For real, for real. We right across the water. The Hudson River. Um, So for me, it's like a bunch of like... So you got... It's separated to two parts. You got like downtown. Mm -hmm. That's like the money. Like high rises and businesses. Big businesses. Corporate. Then you go away from that. And you go into the heart of Jersey City. That's kind of like the hood. The, um, you know, projects. Mm. Stuff like that. You know, where everybody mostly grow up at. You know what's crazy, bro? About um just demographics in the world? Wow. We all swear we got um, these hard stories, and rightfully so. It could be hard, but mm -hmm. I feel like every city in the world, and not even the world, let's, let me not say that, every city in the United States mm -hmm. is pretty much have similar issues, if that makes sense. But we For all, sure. But coming up, we always try to like, you know, we try to like- <laughs> My city the hardest Yeah, city. my city crazy as we got 400 <laughs> murders in the- And it's like, man. They all, they all hard. It's just because everybody poor. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So you grow up not having it. So what happens? You got drug dealers, mm -hmm. you got scammers, mm -hmm. you got killers, robbers. Like so, it's just like that's why I was when the poor. But if you live in the suburbs, you don't got that. Yeah. So that's why that that oh that toughness is out the door because everybody got money. Well, I don't right. need to rob you. I got yeah. my own. You got a kid now, right? Yeah, I got a son. Yo, and it's crazy because um even like just like you said, if you live in the suburbs, just coming up in the hood or in the inner city, it made me think of like um. Kids that grow up privileged, as we would think, right? Mm. And how we would try to like, make fun of them, right? But now we got kids, and it's like, bro, that's the whole goal for our kids not to grow up. Like, we grew up right. just for them to get back <laughs> in this cycle of kids saying, you ain't from the hood. Like, why are we idolizing the streets anyway? That's goofy. It's different. Like, you know, our parents didn't get us out the hood, but I'm yeah. definitely not letting my kid grow up in the hood because some things that I don't want my child to experience, no, you fine. don't need to experience. Because, like, I always think about, like, people be like, oh, your kid going to be soft. I'm like, nah. I'm going to make sure he is MMA. Mm. I'm going to make sure he doing like physical activities. And honestly, I still got family in the hood. So every reunion, every holiday, you're going you gonna to see cousin, uncle that's still there. Like, so you're going to get that other side. Boy, and what's soft though? Like, what is, what like? <sighs> like, you know, like, so so I actually coached that like a Catholic school. And they're like, yeah, like they're like in Philly. They're like, um, like these be suburb kids. But when they play a Philly school, they be like, oh man, them Philly kids just hit different. Mm -hmm. They just hit different. 
But it's just because they're like, yeah, because we got these suburbs, they never got hit with life. So, like, mm. these kids, they coming downhill. They coming downhill to knock your head off. While right. these kids, they ain't, I really don't want to hit them like that. So, it's just like a mindset. It's like, nah, I'm tough. Like, my parents ain't got nothing for me back home. So, it's a mm. different mindset. I can see that. That's what people like all oh, day. So, no, I could definitely see that for sure. I think um, just when I was coming up, I misinterpreted what uh, tough was. Mm. I, um, you know, like coming up, they never taught us how to like manage our emotions. Mm. So I thought tough was like, man, can't just say anything to me. I'm gonna knock you out, yeah. right? It's, gonna be, it's a dub, right? Right. Then I learned that like tough is actually like being able to walk away from a fight. Mm -hmm. That's mental toughness. Like that's Absolutely. probably harder. It's it's easier to punch in the, in the face it's because hard. like you don't have no self control. Like man, right. man get this out of the way. Right. But like I had to I had to learn that like tough is when. You like how you act in in the moments of adversity, right? Like that's what's really tough. Like being able to use your mind, not just your muscles, because right. anybody can use their muscles. It's about what you can do when things when when all hell is breaking loose mm -hmm. and you in the middle. And you gotta think. Yeah, that's what tough is. But that's why you know you got a lot to lose, especially nowadays. I feel like before I didn't care. Like even when I came to Atlanta, like I was like, I'll fight for some money. Like uh, MMA, I'm talking about MMA. I'm like, I ain't care. But now I started getting my way and doing business, doing well. I'm like. I ain't fighting no more. Like, what's the point? Like, I don't have the same hunger to fight professionally mm. as I did when I first came out here. I'm like, I'm trying to make some money. I'll throw me against anybody. But now it's like, eh, I'm cool. I'm no, like, fuck. Got a lot to lose. And you <laughs> finesse your way into Atlanta too, bro. I saw. Hey, Come on, bro. What's the finesse, man? Come on, man. You got the job to pay for the travel. Oh yeah. Come so, on, man. Uh, so you call it finesse? I call it strategic. I mean, finesse, you know what I mean? strategic, tomato, <laughs> tomato. <laughs> I mean, so I mean, like it was, it was the perfect place because I knew. Let me break it down. So. I joined a mentorship that exposed me to the entrepreneurs in Atlanta. I went to Miami, had a good time. Everybody, all the hollow. Man, give my man Marcus his credit, man. Don't try to discredit my man. Come on, man. Hit <laughs> 500. Yeah, I put it out there. But I was just talking about the whole story in general because a lot of people that I met that was heavy, high level entrepreneurs, but it was definitely his mentorship that turned me up on the credit, turned me how to use that credit, turn it to cash. But everybody I knew that was doing something, at least entrepreneur wise, was in Atlanta. I'm like, bro. I need to be around it because I I work in uh, like a suburb in Pennsylvania at the time. So I wasn't seeing that every day. They rich. Like they like old money rich. So mm. like it's different. Like they don't care about the flash. They don't care about Rolls Royces. Like they got nice cars, but you know what I'm saying? It's a different mindset. They don't care about that. So when I was in a um at the my Miami conference, it was like a different vibe because everybody was getting to it in their own way. Mm. So I'm like, I gotta be around the heavy hitters. So I'm like, told my job, like, listen, I wanna get promoted. I wanna go, I wanna transfer to Atlanta. So that's when I interview applied, and they're like, "All right, cool." So they shipped me. They pay for relocation, thank God. And I already knew what the play was. Once I got down here, I'm like, "I'm gonna move with him, I'm gonna shake with him," because I already knew who my mentors was gonna be. What made you even like? What was the thought process behind even like, man, I'm about to pay for the mentorship? Because like coming from the <laughs> city, man, all that shit scam. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> like that's what I'm thinking. That's my first thought before I got introduced to it. So like, what was your introduction of like, all right, I'm gonna pay for the mentorship? Uh, so to be honest, man, I was working a job, working corporate. For me, I was in, it was like 2020 during the middle of the pandemic, I was figuring out ways to make money. So on YouTube, I was just like, how to make more money? How to, because I, I work in the insurance industry, so it's a little different. Like I knew I had stability, but it wasn't like I'm getting rich money. Mm. So I'm like, I'm tired of living just with two, getting paid twice a month. I'm like, I need more money. Right. So I just started looking up any ways to make money and I found him 500 and then I'm like, dang, he lit. Like he had the Rolls Royce, credit cards going crazy. Um, flying across the world, private jets. And I'm like, man, I got to tap in with bro. And I watched like a whole YouTube on him. He showed me how to get like an Amex business credit card, 0% APR for 12 months. I applied the same way he taught. Bam. Got okay. 12K. And his mentorship was like 4,000. So I'm like, shoot, slot. Mm -hmm. And that was the best investment. And it taught me how to actually turn my credit into cash. And that's why I started learning the car rentals. I started learning Airbnb and everything else that opened my eyes up with entrepreneurship. But you ain't give up the job, though. You know, man, I ain't going to lie to you. I feel like in 2023, <laughs> oh, my gosh, if I see another entrepreneur talking about, are oh, you working nine to five? Well, y'all ain't nothing. Like, yeah. I'm tired of seeing it. So, like, what made, like, why did you decide to keep the job? Um, I, um, So, for me, personally, I worked very hard. In the corporate world, because I played football. I started all four years at Chain University in Pennsylvania, and I had the dream. Nice, bro. <laughs> play I was center, all conference bro. linebacker. I played linebacker. I played defense. They I hit. So that's what I did. And I, I always wanted to go to NFL, but um, 
I didn't get the call in draft 2018. I did. I went to trials for the CFL, the AFL. Ain't no call back. So I'm like, man, I got to make some money some way. Can't go back home. Ain't no more rooms in my house for me. So I'm like, I got to I gotta start making money. So I started working corporate. And then I'm like, you know what? This is all I got. Especially I'm mad I ain't make Talia. I'm supposed yeah. to be making M's right now. So I'm like, I'm about to focus on this corporate stuff. I, I got to climb this ladder quickly. So I started going hard with the insurance education. I got my master's in business because mm. I'm like, I got to really level up. So when I did all that, I already had so much equity in. I'm like, I'm not giving up my job because I've worked so hard. By this time, I'm ready. Three years in my career, I'm like, I didn't did all this time equity. Like every Saturday and, and nights, I would go to a Philly to mm. get my master's. I'm like, nah, bro, I did that for a whole year straight. I, I'm gonna stay with my job. No, fact. So that was why my I held mine, but I also learned you could do both. Facts. That's the biggest part that people don't realize, especially um 2020 was starting people doing a remote. What? Remote, man. Damn. I ain't got going traffic no more. I got mad time. So I was working out three times, running my business, still doing everything because it allowed me. Like most people don't even do nothing on the file. Mm. And I haven't had that in my own state. I got bored when I went full time entrepreneurship this year. I went back to a job because it was like too much free time. It's like once you have a good business model, everything's auto automatic, auto automated, you don't need to actually be in the business no more. So I had all this free time, but I'm like, I need to do something with that free time. Mm. So I'm like, I might as well get some money because even I'm like, hey, Jay, what you doing? Nothing. Hey, entrepreneur, what you doing over here? Nothing. Like, y'all not even doing nothing nine to five. Sometimes everybody just playing ball, working out all day. I work out all day with a job. So, yeah, so at the end of the day, my night time is where I really, you know, yeah, get busy and network. Yeah, I got fired because I wasn't, I was doing too much in, the, mm. in my nine to five. I had a remote jiffy. You know? Going I was, crazy. I was going crazy. The old Jay, what you doing, man? I'm at this event whole time. I'm on the clock. Oh, <laughs> I was man. wilding. Yeah, that's out of pocket. Running it up. But <laughs> like you said, nah, but I ain't gonna lie. I think the remote thing was probably one of the best things that happened to the world for real. Mm -hmm. For sure. Like, it, it, it definitely was able to give you space to be an entrepreneur and also space to, like, do your job, especially if you're good at in your job, for real. Absolutely. And I think that's that helped me, man. Like I said, and even and I have an ebook called Cubicles to Cash Flow. And even in that book, I show people like ways that they can actually have their nine to five and keep a job um, and do their side hustle, which could turn to a big hustle. Like I went from four to forty cars in a year with a job remote. Mm. No, fact. feel me like that. That is how you can do it. Like I didn't need to quit. I was work, making six figures in my job and making six figures in business. Bro, why forty cars? That's a lot. <laughs> Come on, you don't even need forty cars. Bro. I don't need it, but the the world do. Atlanta do. So I I, I provide market for the uh, Uber and Lyft drivers, and I seen the business model that was. It was unstoppable. It was recession proof. So I'm like, why well, stop at four cars? I'm I want to get more, mm. more money. Average car like eighty to hundred dollars a day. That's money. So wait, that's um that's like on your personal credit or your business credit? Um, personal how, credit. How was you how, how was you able to get a four? four? So I, it was a couple ways. Um, so I started out on a business credit card. Like my business credit was my best friend. I swipe on a car, cash car at the what, time. Twelve thousand. Yeah. Okay. I was maximizing that thing. Okay. But um, yeah, I swiped. That was my first car. It was an investment car, um, Honda Civic 2014, and then I started doing uh, JVs. Um, so JV is like, hey, you got good credit? Mm -hmm. I'm about to uh, use your credit, run out your car, and cut you a check every month. So I just started pitching that heavy to everybody. Wait, it was you use the credit to buy a car? You, I use your credit to finance a car. But I teach you, to, I, t I show you the play. So I'm like, here, these are my numbers. Here's the proven method. And basically, you're my investor. And I cut you a check at the end of every month. So that's how I was able to grow so fast. I just but kept pitching you, you and pitching. You rent a car. Mm -hmm. oh, wait, make this make sense. I told him. Okay, you come to me. I'm trying to use a credit. I'm trying to finance this car. I'm going to rent it. How much you making a, 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 a month? Like like for the gross? So I said, let's say average car, I make $2,400 gross income. Uh -huh. I might say, hey, I'm taking 60% because I'm managing it. You don't see the car. I do everything. But I'm putting my credit up. I ain't trying to hit none of that. Yeah, yeah, but at the end of the day, you ain't got no money. So it was like, you either get my cash flow or you don't. I mean, some people said no, okay. but some people might need some money. Okay. So like, I cut you a check making 40%, mm -hmm. and you might make 500 to 1,000. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's do, it. Hold let's do the math. Do the yeah, math. Yeah, yeah. 2,400, right? Yeah. Let's say the average car knows 600. Cause you got, that's so the are gross. we making 24? That's, that's the, the gross. Okay, okay, okay. That's 2,400 four. minus the- 600. 600. Card. Minus the insurance, right? It's 150. Okay, minus 150. Insurance. So we had 1650. All right, that's the profit, right? Yeah. Times that by well, 0. 0.40. Ain't no more, that's it. Okay. Times that by 0. 0.40. 660. That's how much you make a month. 
How much the car car costs? What you mean? How much the car costs? Like, cause we financing it. So, like, oh, I mean, you might. How long? Um, this long. You in this game be. five years for sure, but you know that going into it. I mean, the car might be thirty thousand. On average, how much? How long does a car last though? So I, I I prefer Honda Accords, Toyota Camrys. Like these cars don't they last forever? So I mean, ain't this ain't they ain't really going out of style. Even like a 2014, uh, my car got total loss. I made 10k off that car. 2014 this this year. Okay, so we so, they hold so we financing old cars. We, I, I mean, finance pre owned, brand new, brand new. So a Honda, hold up, let me see, bro. A Honda, what kind? Accord. Accord. Honda 2000. Let's say 22. This is last year. Accord. We gonna do some math on this one. Let's see. Let me see price. Well, it's gonna be cheaper now because it's 2023. But let me just say a 23. Just for the sake of conversation, let's see. Okay, all right. So I'm financing the car. If I see something for thirty three thousand dollars, mm-hmm. Carfax thirty three. I finance thirty three thousand dollars off the forty percent. I'm making. I'll bring back thirty nine thousand in cash, so I guess that's not bad because I, it's, I'm still using my credit for the yeah. The you ain't loan. paying no money down. Yeah, and so, I got thirty nine thousand in cash, thirty nine six hundred for five years, over five years. And really, and I ain't do nothing exactly. And and you making that cash flow every time, and, yeah. And that's why you might get two cars. So most people don't stop at one. They about oh, I made six sixty. If I get two. I double that. If I make, th- if I get three cars, triple that. All right, four cars, boom. And that's how I started scaling so quickly because people wanted more money. They're like, oh, yeah, this is hitting. Mm. I want more. And that's how you scale. So you still got 40 cars? 43 right now, yeah. Sheesh. I thought you was just doing a private rental joint. I am doing private. That's all private. You got 40 off the private, like. Correct. All rented out right now. I got no cars left. They mm. all rented out right now. You going crazy. Crazy. When you start this? Um, I started like 2020 when I first learned to play, but I wasn't going as heavy because I started on the platforms. Mm-hmm. Then I realized it wasn't making no no money because it was a middleman. Right. Once I learned the private rental play, like 2021, it was over. How you do the private rental thing though? I learned about the commercial insurance, and then once commercial insurance, I didn't need the middleman no more. So most people like they get terrified because of insurance. If I got personal insurance, I don't want to say somebody ain't gonna ask it. My rates gonna go high. I can't get approved nowhere. But the commercial insurance changed the game because it allows anybody to rent the car. But I'm thinking like 43, dude, that's all on you, right? It's not like through Uber or nothing like that. Like, yeah, all on me. That's so how, how is somebody renting through you? Like, how they find you? They got my number. Word of mouth is crazy. Word of mouth is crazy. They got my number. I got a customer list at mm. this point. What's the average like? Um, time somebody going to rent the car? They hold it for at least like three months plus. They and hold you, it. You doing 43 every <laughs> night, every 90 days. Yeah, every night they, they keep way more than 90 days, but yeah, every night that's crazy. They all send a cash app, Apple Pay, whatever. You think, you, you think that business dying down right now? No, that's I'm getting more. It's never dying. People always need a car. And you know what? You know, it's the crazy thing. Like, we talk about corporate jobs, right? A lot of people can't, one, don't got the credentials to get a corporate job, mm-hmm. they don't know how to get it, right? Mm-hmm. So, everybody want to talk about being an entrepreneur and having their time to themselves, this gig economy. So, they want to work on their own. But the only people that's doing that is Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, Uber Eats. So I'm actually really, I feel like I'm an employer. I really employ people because I allow you to make money and feed your family. That's why people keep the car so long because I'm making money to feed my family. So give me the play. If somebody's trying to get into this, like what's the, how they, how they get started? All right, boom. So let's say, I'm going to start with a cash car and make it easy. Like let's not even talk about the credit. You can start with a cash car, get $5,000 cash car. You got, first you can go to, I and mean, we live in Atlanta, so we got a nice airport. You can go to the airport. Hey. I'm do cash car rentals, sixty dollars a day, four fifty a week, whatever you want, like just to make some money. And you're already paid cash, so you got to make your investment back, obviously. But after that, it's all hundred percent profit. And then, but cars not five thousand dollars no more. You can find a little cheap hoopty, five thousand, four four Focus. That's that's a good cars. And the reason why they're good cars because you can change the engine out for the low, like three hundred, five hundred dollars. You talking some stuff? You know what I'm saying. Okay, okay. Now you can hit them with the credit play too. Like okay, let's say I got good credit. I don't got five thousand dollars cash. I go to the dealership, no money down, get a car, brand new, start your first car. Not due till forty five days, mm. so you can run a plate, run a bag up for all forty five days, and then it's thirty days after that. But that whole you ain't you ain't had been no investment for real. All you did was no money down, got the car. Obviously, you got put trackers in it, you got to um, put insurance on it, but that's it, and you just make money. 
So let me ask you this, because you had a couple situations where like people ran off on the plug for per se, right? People like driving all the way yeah. up to like I think it's Alabama or something like that. Yeah. So similar to real estate or like uh renting apartments, right? Mm -hmm. Some people don't want to get into real estate because you got squatters, it's like they mess up your property. It's like, man, it's it's costing them more money than they can make. Facts. Can it can I'm assuming it can get like that on a car situation too. How do you avoid that? Oh, so we pit trackers and kill switches on every single car. So it but like first of all, you're your own business, so you're gonna be on it. Like this ain't no squatter, like I'm let you rock out 30 days. By day one, you miss a payment, I'm on your head. Right. I'm chopping the car and go and grab it. Okay. So it ain't no really running off on a plug. Even if you go to Alabama, I will chop you in Alabama. And if I don't go get, I'll send somebody to go get the car. Okay. So all right, back. Let's get back to it. Cash car, five thousand dollars, maybe ten thousand dollars. Boom. Well, how from there? What we doing? That's just it. That's the play right there. Nah. So you gotta get yourself some commercial insurance, like we said. The trackers. You got the kill switch. How you get commercial insurance? Is that like that's like is that a credit thing? Like I'm. You gotta I'm get an LLC. Easy. You gotta get. Nah, it's just easy. You got an LLC. Uh, right now it's two ways you can do it. Um, we use Lula. Lula is the commercial insurance, but right now they just changed their whole situation where you can only get five cars. Anybody with five cars more can get insurance. So therefore. Before they was letting anybody like you got two cars, three cars, four. They let you get a policy, but now they like you need five cars or more. Mm. So now it's like other plays like um you use insurance called Shore, Allianz, Bonza. So these are all like rental car insurance. Like you pay per day. Like it covers up to like thirty five thousand some. Shore cover up to like a hundred thousand on a vehicle. But these are things that you put on the car so you can rent it out to anybody you want. Mm. I can rent out to anybody with these insurance. So once I got that insurance in play, I know my cost, right? I already paid cash for it. I put the track the installation in the car. All I, all I do is find the customers. I get the A, go market. Like I said, go to the airport, put your business cards out there. Hey, I got cash cars. You know, they be like, hey, yo, I'm tired of this jinky car. I, you got a nice car. Or, you know, sometimes they just like, yo, I just need a car. Like my cousin at home ain't doing a, he, he need to work, DoorDash or something. Mm. All right, cool. Put him in position. Or you can really just like Facebook ads, man. They work. Marketplace. Hey, I got this car for rent. Atlanta, Georgia. Lit. So I think Atlanta especially is really great for rentals because everybody need a car. So I'm from Jersey. Everybody got buses, trains, mm -hmm. and all this extra stuff. So the the situation might be a little different if you up north. But down here, everybody need a car. It take you 20 minutes to go anywhere out here. Right. So you need a car. So that's why I say it's recession-proof out here. No, you're right, bro. I, was, I think we was going a mile, two miles and a half to get to the studio. <laughs> of course, it was rush hour. It said 23 minutes. I'm like, bro, I probably could run fast. Like... Two two and a half miles <laughs> faster than twenty three minutes. Facts. Hey, Drive is take crazy like fifteen minutes. Oh, whatever. But okay. So after that, is that it? That's the play, right? That's there? That's the play, bro. You just keep renting your car out. You know, you do your your maintenance on your car. You know, I actually have my renters do the maintenance. So like, if they got you know they have it for long term, but hey, do the oil change. They got the brakes done, the tires. I pay for it because that's my value, my customer value to them. Like, oh, they I'm gonna keep with KD because. He handle everything. All I mm. do is keep paying him. I'm gonna keep renting his car. Yo, how much money do you think you made off of this? I'm getting your business. <laughs> I got. I got. I could do. Since I 2020. Could do, yeah, I mean, at this, I'm gonna just do monthly right now. No, how much do you think you made all together? <laughs> yeah. I want. We gotta know. He said, "Want to know? They want to trust you. We gotta you trust, trust you. you." Yeah, I mean, I feel like if you want to put it that way, I mean, but remember, I went from four to forty this year, so I probably hit like eight hundred thousand since 2020. And you went back to your job? Yeah. Because I like the I like the corporate. I ain't gonna lie. I like the hustle of the competition in corporate. Cause a lot of people can't talk corporate. A lot of people can't yeah, deal with everybody I, in corporate. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a different game that you gotta know how to interact with everybody. Yo, that's the hardest thing that I I had to um for me to try to learn was the talk. Mm -hmm. I could not speak corporate. Like that was so hard for me. Yeah, it's a culture thing, bro. It's like, I mean, I had an uh, internship since my freshman year of college, luckily, and I had that all four years. So I kind of got ingrained with college and business corporate life. Mm -hmm. So that helped me actually understand the culture and know how to speak it and talk it and deal it. Yo, give me some game on the corporate life. I'm just curious. Would you say, like, would you suggest that? <sighs> it depends who you are, man. I always want to be CEO. And I'm not talking about like an entrepreneur CEO. I wanted to be like CEO of Coke, CEO of Pepsi. I wanted to be like high, high level because I know they... And people sleep on CEOs of those high Fortune 500 companies. They get money. Like, they make millions a year. Stock options, millions of dollars. So I already knew that I wanted to make money. If it wasn't going to be NFL, I wanted to be, like, the high-level businessman. So I think that's that's kind of why you got to have that mindset for it. Like, entrepreneurship is different than yeah, corporate. It's yeah. not it's not the same because you can't run your show how you think. You, you got to run their show. Mm. 
and running their show is sometimes you got it's politics. It's like with anything with football, entrepreneurship, everything is politics. It's how you carry yourself, who you are, your name, you know, what you did. Like, you know, having a master's really helped open doors that might not open doors for everybody else. Like mm-hmm. that's how I can get the opportunities that somebody else might get because I have the credentials. Mm-hmm. If I didn't have the credentials and I didn't know people, I probably wouldn't get offered nothing because they don't know me. I'm a, but I'm assuming it's still ongoing, like, learning, right? That's because I, I went to go get credentials for, like, tech and scrum, mm-hmm. right? I had my credentials. I got the job and everything. But what I learned in the corporate space was these guys are so... These guys are invested in this like I'm invested in my podcast. Like, mm-hmm. they're... Study listening to podcasts about their their um work. They study doing research about their work. So when you talk to them, they like, man, I, I just read this. I just did I'm this. an expert. Yeah, yeah. And, and I wasn't knowing that. So I'm assuming like that's a part of it as well. Right. So that's a part of my development. Like I said, like um once I got rid of the NFL dreams, I had to focus on corporate. So that's what I was doing. So I got over ten insurance designations. That's like how you talk about certifications for tech. I got ten insurance designations. So I, I learned the language. I got my masters. I almost got it's called a CPC. I got my masters of insurance. That's kind of what it's like. So like I didn't dedicated that time and learned that talk. So the development is putting that extra time. Like this ain't something on a job. Like this is on my own. I study for two hours a night to get all these exams and pass these tests. But that's what I did because I wanted to stand out. When you see my name on a resume, oh yeah, I want. I, want, I at least got to talk to him. Mm. I at least need to give him a shot. So to your point, you definitely got to put that time in and put that um development time in with anything you do. If you want to be the best, you no, got to learn. And so th- this came before uh the cars. Yeah, yeah, I was in corporate for a while. So let me ask you this then. This for somebody that got hoop dreams, podcast dreams, anything entrepreneurship dreams, right? Would you suggest to take some time to get right in the corporate space first before you go entrepreneurship? Mm, that's a good one. I For me, I feel like yes, because it gives you that structure. I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs, they lose because they don't have structure and discipline. Mm. Structure and discipline is the most important thing. That's why I can get up at 6 a.m., work out. Go to work nine to five, five to nine, do some more like my own business stuff. Like, cause I have that structure and playing football, college football that helped put me in that mindset of just like, you got to consistently go. We always on a schedule. So I think having that corporate stre- schedule will allow you to have the mindset like, okay, nine to five, I might not have a job, but I got to do my business. Cause a lot of people, they don't put the time in their business. You got to put eight hours plus in mm, your business facts. to be good. So you got to put that same time. Whereas a lot of entrepreneurs that I know, they might wake up at 12. They do a business from 12 to three and then three to eight, they BS. And it's like, bro, y'all got to have some structure, some discipline to actually do your business as if you have a nine to five. That that's is your nine to five. Cause that's how you make your money. That's a fact, bro. Like, I think that's probably the hardest thing about it. Mm-hmm. Like being able to structure your time so you can focus and do some things that's, like progressing you. Right. A lot of times people be moving, but they ain't really like progress, right? They got motion, but they ain't got, you know what I'm saying? They ain't, <laughs> they ain't doing, going nowhere. They ain't going nowhere with <laughs> it, bro. I probably, probably say, I seen some Instagram posts about that, but nah, that's a fact. I think that's the hardest part. Yo, so think, peep this, you made 800,000 just in the business mm-hmm. since three years. Bro, you went to Cheney. It was a time where you like, man, I'm, I always say hoop dreams for like a better words, but we talking about NFL. We got ball dreams. Would you ever thought you would be where you at now and be so as successful as you are and it not be football? No, to be honest, I mean, I always knew I was gonna be hot. I think the real the real answer is I didn't know I was gonna do it this fast. Right. Mm. So when you think a corporate like nine to five, you think right, I'm gonna be good at 40 because you know what I'm saying? I gotta climb this ladder. And this ladder, like you could tell just from people that came and went, like, all right, it's gonna take me a good 10, 15 years before I take off in this thing, before they even pay you not even half a million dollars, they might not pay you to you like 40, mm-hmm. if that's even the case. A lot of people don't even make it there. Um, so for me, it's like this entrepreneurship like sped everything, it's like a super accelerator to the success I wanted. And mm-hmm. I'm like, wow, like I'm so happy I invested myself into a mentorship to able to give me open my mind, basically, like. It's not just one way. Cause you know, nobody is an entrepreneur. That's the wrong world. Nobody know entrepreneur. They if they're entrepreneur, they selling something selling, else. Selling drugs, yeah. <laughs> I'm about to they say, ain't yeah. selling like uh actual yeah, business. They ain't renting no cars for yeah, sure. They, they might be stealing cars, but they ain't right. They ain't doing no actual business. And like we see businesses all the time, like the mom and pop stores, like bodegas, 
like they probably get money too, but like you know, you don't think of it like, oh, Poppy and them, they they entrepreneurs too. But you just like, oh, Man, they I'll probably money make here. more money and keep the <laughs> Chinese change. Chinese food, right? everything. Uh, these corner stores probably make more money and keep the change <laughs> than we probably make in a year. And right. then at the end of the day, they still ain't gonna let us go for that two cent. They be no. like, nah, I need my two. Probably right. times I said keep that. Don't worry yeah. about it. You mean to tell me I can't go for two cent? Bro, right. They like, they, they, yeah, they need every every cent, and that's no, and that's what I'm saying. But like. Growing up, you never talk about, oh, like, he's an entrepreneur. I wonder how much money he make. You just go there just to spend money. You don't think about, I can have my own business. At least mm. I did. You feel me? So I think that's that's cool about entrepreneurship. It can really speed up your success. Where I like, corporate, I'm like, I got to wait time for you to level up. Where mm. nah, I can level up now at 27 years old. I can go crazy. Mm. Yo, what, um, when the last time you thought about football? I'm just curious. Like, like damn, man, I could really. Ah. <laughs> uh... My little brother's actually in college right now. He's an all American running back. I only think of it when I think about him because mm. he's still fighting for the be in the NFL right now. So like when I talk to him, I think I'm like, dang, like I was nice. I could, I could do it. But I, I live through him, man. I hope he can make it so I could live through him. You honest. got any friends in the league? I don't right now. Nah, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. That probably was like bittersweet. So I had a homie. I got a couple homies in the league, right? And like I was talking to him. Talking about West, Terrence West, right? And uh, he was like. Man, Jay, you could have been in the league too, bro. Like you, was not, like don't say that. It may make you feel right. like, like, like word. But yo, to be honest, I think the talent. I mean, I don't want to throw no shade on my, but I think I don't think the talent's there as it was before. Because like, for example, like I played linebacker, so like I'm thinking about Ray Lewis. That was my favorite player. I'm thinking like, yo, he he hit crazy. He two fifty solid. Nowadays, I feel like linebackers be like two twenty, like mm. safety side moving fast. Like it's a different game. So I think it's more talent now. You think it's more talent? To go from 250 to 220 at a linebacker, you doing more. It's like it's like the corporate space. Mm. Think about it. I remember I was saying I was doing scrum, right? Mm -hmm. You ain't about to go on LinkedIn nowhere and just be able to be a scrum master. Like you gotta be scrum PMP. Uh you gotta have like three of them certifications now. Same with NFL is like. You ain't about to just be a linebacker and just be able to hit. You gotta cover. Yeah. You gotta like you gotta run a four four now. It's different. Like <laughs> yeah, they you're run right. a four you three. You gotta be more talented. I can't yeah, listen to your point. Different now. But then like if I tell my little brother, like I hear running back, like, yo, hey bro, they don't hit they don't hit that hard. Oh yeah, run run like Derrick Henry, just run right through him. Like that's what I think more of like a physicality of the game. Like I don't think the physicality is there, which no, for sure. Which I think is really what scares people from football in general. Like, yo, they 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 going crazy. Like if I was in the league, as in like if I was like in 220 in shape, I could run like them, jump like them. I'm not scared of nothing because like nobody that big hitting nothing like yeah. to me. So that's why I say like it's probably easy as in even Tom Brady recently said it like his competition it ain't it ain't the same. It's like I wouldn't be scared enough. If I was a quarterback, I'm not. It's no fear or nothing. If I'm a receiver, y'all can't headhunt me. It's no fear when I go catch nah, this ball. Facts. But you, bro, you on, you, you wilding right now. You talking about you talking about the best of the best. Of course, Tom Brady is saying, <laughs> it, like, bro, he's Tom Brady. Like, but I'm saying he went through different efforts to say that. Like he played in 2000. But he's still Tom Brady. But I'm saying he could. But he can see the development of each player, right? He lived in each other. It's not like he played ten years ago and he got. Oh yeah, like I don't like the new guys. I'm saying like, he played against. I all ain't listening to none of what he's saying because he's a goat. Like, <laughs> Think about it, it's like, bro, <laughs> bro, he's saying that right whole time. You got a little Kyler Murray over here trying try, try to get it over the line, <laughs> trying to throw it over the line. Like, it's like, bro, what do you mean the competition? Like, these niggas is here. He feels the competition. Yeah. Tom Brady, when I'm having, like, he different. Like, of course you don't feel like there's no competition. Boy, that's you Tom fact. Brady. Like, you I mean, talking? I mean, that's why I'm not in the league right now. So, no, I mean, thanks. hopefully my little brother can get there. And if he get there, I already know he's going to turn it up. So, nah, bro, I live I, through him. But even with that, talking about the, the football, I was telling my man, it's like, we were saying, like, how many people who ain't go to the league or the or the uh the NBA that was really nice that could have did it. I feel like it ain't the talent. I, part of it is the talent, but most of it is the dedication. It's the commitment. Mm. A lot of people don't have that 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 commitment or dedication to, to stay at something for so long mm -hmm. and to be able to get to that high level. That's a fact. Yeah, probably like if I if I had probably different circumstances as if money wasn't like I had to get it on my own, like no help, I probably would have like What you mean you had to get on your own though? So like my mom and dad, like they like I think my dad lost his job at the time. You know, mom, she barely make it. So it's like I had no place to go back home after college. So mm -hmm. I didn't have that. Like, you know, some players might have a place where, all right, you know, if this doesn't work out, I can go home and get my feet together and go back out in the world. I didn't have that. So I knew that if I don't make money, it's like I don't have nothing. Mm -hmm. And that fear of me trying to do that dream and not having nothing, I'm like, nah, I need some stability in my life. 
So I made a decision early to like, because I already had the business corporate life too. So it was like, it's easy for me to go there. Mm. Whereas in like somebody else, I'm like, I got nothing, but I still can go fall back at my mom's house just in case. I feel like that's a different, that's a different ball game. But you going to tell me your pops lost his job. Your mom's was barely making it. I'm not you ain't six. have You ain't have the support that you needed. And you don't be thinking like, man, damn, man, if my parents would have just stuck it out, bro. I could have really been in the league. You ain't never uh, nah, done it. I, don't, I don't care no more because I make mm. money now. Okay. So I think before, like, even, even if you look at like like an average rookie contract, mm. well, they make like, make, depends okay, on what you Nah, go ahead. Nah, go say I what you're going to say. No, nah, I'm saying like, NFL I think, money now. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying like, I'm saying like base salary be like, it could be like 200,000, sometimes like half a million. Like, if You've I make that, done that. It's cool. if I make fifty k a month, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it don't it don't phase me no more because I'm living the same lifestyle that they live in, and I don't have to pit the wear and tear on my body. Because at the end of the day, football will stop one day, mm. but my business will continue to grow forever because I built it to go forever. So mm. that's kind of where I'm at with it. Like you know, like you see, like Shaq, how he's still eating while other player basketball players they might have come and go. Oh yeah, they was nice, but they ain't got money like Shaq because Shaq mm. invested in so much businesses. That's how I'm trying to be. I'm like, all right, cool. Like, I might can't play ball no more, but I'm gonna get this money though. Nah, facts. Yo, how how, how your relationship with your parents now? Like, you they good. I mean, my my you dad. Your mom's a host yet? Nah, you got NFL money. I mean, it's, nah, it's I ain't. See, see, I'm financial literate. Where I'm, I'm not there where I could just buy a house for her because I have a lot of siblings. So I got to take care of a lot of people. So I need to make a lot more money before I can do that officially and take care of my household. Yo, it's, it's let's stay there, right? You got a lot of siblings. Siblings, siblings, come from Jersey, Jersey City, right? Mm -hmm. You people see they they might see this interview and they be like, "Yo, you made eight hundred thousand since twenty 2020. They automatically like, "Man, you rich, you get money," mm -hmm. but they don't even understand what comes with it, right? Like how things change. Talk to me about how the how, how your life has changed and how you look at money now compared to when you was back in mm -hmm. the hood and you, you think 800,000 is a lot. A lot of money, yeah. I just think um, running a business is a lot of investing. Um, so like, it's like, I wanna scale higher so I hire more employees. Mm -hmm. I wanna do more for my, I wanna come to different events, marketing, networking, conferences, that all costs. So it's like the money that I'm like, yeah, I'm thinking I'm gonna stash it, but it's nearly going back to building and growing. Cause if you don't put money in your business, yeah, it's gonna, gonna fail facts. and it's not gonna grow how you think you wanted to grow. Like, especially like in a car business, like you gotta have cash reserve, you know, tire might go out, brakes might go out, you're gonna spend all your money and be like, Oh, I can't cover that? That's crazy. Mm -hmm. You got to keep your business going. You got to have money to keep growing, marketing, scaling. And that's the difference where, like you said, before I didn't know, like, yeah, I mean, you made 100000 You good, bro. What you mean? Nah, like, you got to keep growing. You got to put that money to use because I don't want to be bro. I don't want to just take what I got and spend it all up and then be like, what I got now? And another thing people don't understand is, did you make 800 or you brought in 800 Brought in. See, that's that's the thing that people <laughs> don't understand. You, we throw gross, these numbers out, right? We, gross revenue. Yeah, and then we, you got to take away car notes, expenses, everything. It don't that eight hundred don't look like eight hundred no more, right? You get what I'm saying? Right. But people don't understand it. They hear these numbers, and like I'm pretty sure your family or, or even your close friends back in the hood be like, "Man, you got it, bro!" Like, bro, you have no clue. Then what people don't talk about. I mean, you probably was a lot smarter than me, but the moment you really start making money, you. Depending on your lifestyle, right? I was mm. I was a young <laughs> broke nigga in the hood. I'm gonna keep it straight up. When I start making money, the first thing I did was adjust my lifestyle. And we all but... know when you make money, that's the worst thing to do. But you don't know that <laughs> at that time, right? But even 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 to even if you're not like, oh, I'm just gonna spend my money. But lifestyle creep is inevitable to me. It's like mm. you want to live in a better career. Why you keep using these corporate words, man. Lifestyle <laughs> creep. I like it. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, it's like I, I want to live. I want to live how no, I'm making it. Like, I want to live in a high rise. I want to drive the BMW. I want to travel the world. Like, I'm not about to make all this money to live how I was in the hood. Like, I was never that person. Like, oh, I'm gonna drive this Honda, but have all this money in bank. No, I want to live life because yeah. I didn't live life before. But that's what I'm saying. That we all like. Yeah, well, so, I yeah. was like that, right? So it's the same thing. So now your man's what people don't understand. Your man's from the hood. Like, man, you lit. You got all this and all this. Like, bro, yeah, I am lit. I do got all this, but this why I can't give out no extra money because I got right. maintain all yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. And I ain't trying to go back. Right, like my expenses might be ten thousand a month. Exactly. That's 
Easy. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So I get it. You ain't never like have no no conversations like with your friends back home about that, or like you, anybody try to like because they see you shining. Like, yo, man, can I can I get like a, a loan broke? You invest in this, um, this this situation. To be like, honest, thank God I have some really good friends back home. If y'all watching this, y'all, I love y'all because I my friends never asked me for nothing because mm. I think not to be funny, but I think I was the poorest out of my friends. Y'all can stamp that too. So like, and I say poor as in like we just didn't have that much extra money to spend. So like. I feel like from my friends, they see me really grind and grow because like I never hated on nobody. Mm. I never asked for nothing. I already knew I was good at football. So I'm like, I'm just going to focus on football. Y'all do that, I'm going to practice. Y'all do that, I'm going to the gym. So I think for me, it was just like they know how much I had to struggle. And even to this day, my moms and they still going through the go through. So they can probably be like, you know what? I'm going to let KD have his time because he really put that work in to get where he at. Mm. So we talk about all the good things and the money and the shining and that. The lifestyle, luxury, all that. What you think the bad, the, the worst part about being successful? Worst part of being successful is actually running a business, man. It's 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 a lot of nights that it's hard. As in, like, my I don't sleep. As in, like, not saying literally don't sleep. But I'm saying like, if I get a rental call me at midnight, I gotta pick up because it might he got into accident, mm. or if um somebody owe me some money, like I gotta consistently be on my game. Even like I got a nine to five. People still hitting me, hitting my line. If I got this, like I, I have so much decision making power that like I can't just chill, and I, I sometimes <sighs> don't like it because like I can't just be like, all right, I'm just like, you know, what I'm saying, just let money make money. It's never really like that because every time I even get like really lax, I start to lose money. Mm. So like just back, we talk about maintaining. The hardest part is really maintaining your money and maintaining your businesses because. If you don't, it's gonna cripple. You got mm. customers. You got especially. I say you got forty plus cars. You got forty different customers right there. You got employees. You got. Uh, I run. I have a credit repair business. So you got people asking about different things. Like, hey, when's this gonna get deleted or when this going on? So like, you got to stay on top of all that. You can't just be like, all right, I'm not gonna talk to none of my clients. Nah, I want to be the best credit repair. So I'm gonna talk to all my clients, make sure they get their stuff deleted. But I'm pretty sure you got like some systems in place to help, right? Yeah, absolutely. So you got systems in place, but still, like I can't, you can't just let the systems just do everything. Like I don't even let my VA just do everything because that means it's not like I'm not part of it. I want to be a part of it. I still close all my sales calls. I still talk to my people because that's where my brand is. Mm. They want to know Keyson. They want to know KD Consultant. They don't want to just see a guy from the Philippines. Mm. They want to know me. They want to talk to me. Yo, you know it's funny, man. I, I'm a, I'm just curious. Yeah, you make all the money, right? And like those parts are hard. When the last time you you think you was like, man, I'm tired, bro. When the last time you felt like that? Like tired, like life. I was just like, it would explain I'm tired. I'm tired every day, but like, just man, like, my, yeah, you might I, just like you might not quit, but like, man, I'm tired. This is it's a lot. Um, have you ever felt that? Nah, not yet. Mm -mm, Cause mm. I feel like. I got a lot. I got a lot. I'm responsible for a lot. I got son now. And you never felt like you were tired? Mm -mm. Cause mm. I'm just hungry, bro. I got I got so much goals that I gotta hit to even like I didn't even hit a million yet. Like, you mm. know what I'm saying? Like just even something like might be like, oh, that ain't nothing. But like I didn't hit my million yet. So I gotta hit there first before I can be like, I'm tired. Cause somebody mm. else that hit their million, that ain't tired. And I'm like, he kicked my palm. I'm very competitive. No, fuck. So it's like I'm not gonna let nobody beat me if I can. If I, can, if I can reach it. No, in fact. So that's that's kind of what keep me going. It's like, nah, I seen Pushman. I seen him fine. I see my mentors going crazy. They just bought another Rolls Royce. They just did this. They did, oh, nah, I got, I got a lot <laughs> of catching up to do. Up, like, yeah, but like some people might look at me, but I'm looking at somebody else. You yeah. know, that's how it always go. You just always looking at the next person. I, well, I think that's the part that's, that, that has caught me off guard in the past, to be honest. That competitiveness. Mm. And that's when I had to like scale back. Cause it's like, man, I'm competitive too. So like my peers, I'm looking at, man, Finesse was just talking about this. Like he might do get an interview and I'm like, man, oh no, I gotta level up. Yeah. I gotta get enough. I got you know what I'm saying? One of them. Crazy. But I think because I'm in Atlanta, I'm surrounded around so many people like that. And that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But I've come to the the, the 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 realization where I gotta just accept what I what I have and stop looking because sometimes that will that will exhaust you, right? Make my brain tired, like, yo. <laughs> Tired of just like like a hamster in a wheel just running. You know what I'm saying? I, I ain't gonna lie, bro. It'd be like, I just gotta relax, man. But that's why I do. I take my vacations. I take my breaks. I tell you, I do a lot of working out. Like mm. right now, I got three gym memberships. That that be my therapy. Once I bro, hit you the gym, love this gym memberships. Yeah, man. Once I'm in the gym, I hit the gym. I I clear my mind on everything. Oh, I'm good. Mm. I'm good. I let out punch the bag. Ah, I'm good. I'm good. I mean, that's important though. Like you gotta mm -hmm. like. 
that I don't want to say hobby, but having something to be able to like take yeah. your mind off of like work. Absolutely, that's super important. Yeah, Damn, I think that man. helps me a lot. I really think that's my secret sauce to, cause I work out like every day. Like so, like every day, every day. Bro, you just too strong, bro. Like no, man. I tell, I tell. I don't know. I just love it, bro. It's like self improvement junkies. Like you know, I was like, I want to always get better. Like even if I think that's why I was good at football. To be honest, like. My bro, dad you, even said I was like, trash. Come on, my platform lying to these people, bro. You talking? <laughs> you can about... check my highlights. You can check my stats, man. I was. What is on Huddle? Huddle. Uh, I got you know all P Sac. Okay. That's Division two. <laughs> you know what I'm saying like I, I got stats and accolades. I, I never just talk just to talk. So for me, it's like I think I was so good because I always like to improve. My dad said I was trash, but then I just kept coming and coming. I just get better because I learn very fast. I think mm. that's a lot of thing. Like you might teach me some, I'm gonna execute fast. Or you might teach me a play. Like my my dad used to be me mad and all the time. Then I started figuring out how to precision pass and all that. Oh yeah, I started beating them. Wait, I thought wait, Cheney was D two? Mm-hmm. I Chaney thought it was D one double A. Nah, that's D two. We play against like um Bloomsburg, Westchester. We did play against Lincoln University. That's in Pennsylvania. They Lincoln is one double A, right? And nah, they D two. <laughs> Lincoln nah, they not C-I-D- They C I double A. Wow. That's yeah, cra- they, so y'all play Bowie? We don't play Bowie. They play Bowie though. They lay in the CIAA. Boy, be spanking in the CIAA. Yeah, they do. They be going I hard. don't know why I thought, like, because I went to Morgan, I'm thinking, I, I automatically assume every school was one AA. One <sighs> nah, yeah, nah, it's, it's Division Two. They, uh, I think they did HBCUs filthy anyway, because they, you know, HBCUs always get lack of funding. Yeah. So it's always not that many scholarships, and we always play against programs that got all the bread for real. Yeah. And then, but even still, like, because even, like, one AA. It's a whole, it's a different beast because like you got PWI schools. That's one like for example, Towson in Maryland, right? Yeah, I know Towson. Towson is like one Top double A. They good and like and they always have Morgan versus Towson. It's like bro, like it's a fake rivalry, but <laughs> man, niggas know Morgan ain't really competing with Towson because like they get more scholarships. Like you get, like you said, yeah, they, they get got, more funding. They got the money, bro. Like, man, the money. People don't realize even with anything, money wins, man. Because like you got five players that's on scholarship, right? That's thorough, but they got twenty that was all on scholarship. That's thorough. No, so facts. they gonna play way different than your five that's playing. You know what I'm saying? I think. Yo, that's what you why. think about um, Dion leaving uh, Jackson State? <sighs> Dion's fan, uh, great. So I don't know, man. He, I think anywhere he go, people just gonna just talk about him. You like, want as a fellow HBCU. Was I mad yeah. that he left? Nah, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna yeah, Because it's like, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm an HBCU alumni, but like, for real, for us, like, HBCU been having a lot of problems, bro. They got a lot of problems. Mm. Like, legit operation problems, legit, like, politic problems, legit money problems. Nah, like legit money problems. So it's like, yeah, my brother, uh, he went to Mississippi State, and he got he left, like, first month, and they tried to charge him for, like, he went there the whole year. Like, I'm like, bro, like, these schools be tripping. Yeah, facts. So it's like, it is what it is. It's gonna sound <laughs> sick. As as much as I love my HBCUs that I went to, right? The thing that they taught me the most in college, <laughs> outside of like networking, right, mm-hmm. was being responsible. And that and that was for negative reasons, right? Because if I wasn't responsible for my <laughs> my NASA boy, they was going. Was it NASA? What is it called? The uh, uh, fast for. fast for. My bad. If I wasn't responsible for my own fast for, <laughs> it gonna drop your classes, and then you gotta go to the <laughs> withdrawal. <laughs> you gotta go to the what's name? The long line. Yeah, they don't. Like, that's they an HBCU thing. They don't hold your hand on nothing. Nothing. They don't hold you. I, like, I went to an email. Bro, I sw- <laughs> bro, I went to a PWI. I went to McDaniel College. I swear, because yeah. I was playing D three at the time. I went to McDaniel College. I put this on everything. Yo, the the counselors. I don't know what the name of it is. They were so nice. They would call you like. Hey Jay, just like they were coming by my nickname and everything. <laughs> hey Jay, just like you know, you gotta um, don't forget to fast for. Mm-hmm. Hey Jay, you know what? I'm gonna start it for you, and I just need you to come sign it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Boy, I went to Morgan. Yo, you on your own, B. Boy, you on your own, B. <laughs> what was the building third? What was the, <laughs> we was <Yeah>, Montebello. <laughs> the line is out the door. Like you talking about Black Friday? <laughs> it yeah, crazy. it's just like they ain't got the staff. They ain't got nothing. They ain't calling you, bro. Yeah, they trying to go home. Nine no to five, care. they going home. They, they leave home. at four. Right. Like, <laughs> boy, you. They leave at four. I'm Man. like, bro, I'm try- I was here. Nah, you come back tomorrow. You got to come back tomorrow. <laughs> you ain't in line early. It's a dub, boy. Yeah, bro. You ain't in line for three hours. They get there. Like, I'm sorry. I'm on lunch. Like, yeah, bro. I had, I had so much from people transfer, bro. So many people that went in and out of HBCU because they like, man, I'm going to the PWI school. <laughs> I ain't, this is this is struggle. I ain't go to struggle to go to struggle. <laughs> yeah, nah, facts. No, yeah, man. Yo, so what's like, what you think, We 
again, you've been so successful with what you got going on. What you think is next? Like, what what are some of the things that you're looking to do to like better the business and and, and expand? Yeah, man. So for Nate, for me, my goal two thousand twenty four is really still expand. I'm really trying to get to uh, eighty cars. Um, mm. I'm gonna buy all cash though. So I'm going leaning away from the finances to more cash cars because I like that hundred percent profit. Mm. Um, and also want to do more mentorship and impact in the community by teaching the game more because I'm like I'm like I'm doing well, but let me start teaching and having these mentorships so everybody can start eating because it's more than enough. Cars for everybody. I got more customers than cars, so anybody can hop in this game. I don't feel it's no competition, bro. Mm. It's, it's, here, have it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it's so many coaches out here, bro. I'm getting tired. Like everybody, a coach. Yeah, I wake up, I go through Instagram. <laughs> I think we got more coaches on Instagram than video vixens. Boy, I swear, like mm. it's more. I see more guys on Instagram. Maybe that's just coaching. who you follow, though. Cause like yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah. it's a lot of people that don't. Like I have a lot of people that I talk to just on a regular, not nothing business that need a coach, that need somebody to, you know, help them out because it, people out here are struggling, bro. Like, mm, no, you know what I mean? Everybody not just going to the grocery store and not worry about the price. They just, you know what I mean? Some people are really like, yo, I can't afford to eat today. I can't afford to pay my rent. I'm struggling. Facts. And I might lose my house. Like those people I talk to on a regular because I fix credit. So I hear all the stories. So I'm like, Yo, y'all need help. Y'all need nah, somebody thanks. to pitch y'all credit to cash. I need somebody to really pour into y'all and show y'all it's a different way. You ain't got to struggle no more at that job. Let me show you how to really get to it. So let me ask you then, because I see so many coaches, right? Mm -hmm. You see so many clients. What makes you different than all of the coaches that I see? I just feel like I'm, I'm just different because I'm like I'm on the ground with my people. Like I feel like I told you I fixed credit, so I already see the problem. You come to me with bad credit, obviously... Something's going on financially that's causing you to have bad credit. So I help a lot of people that can really change their life from me teaching them how to rent cars out, me teaching them how to even fix credit. Like, there's so many ways that I can see that it's opportunity. Like, a lot of people from Jersey, like, I feel like I'm the only one that's in Jersey City that I know that's renting cars out or doing anything entrepreneurship-wise. So I'm like, somebody need to teach y'all. I mm. mean, y'all know nobody in Jersey City, but I do. I could teach everybody in Jersey City, but you know what I'm saying? They're not, they not in Atlanta. It's feel like when you're in Atlanta, you kind of, that's all you see is entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs. But outside of Atlanta, you start just going into the regular world. It's not the same. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, because I travel a lot too. Like I be in Texas. I be um, in Jersey a lot because my son. So like it, it, when I talk to regular people, they be like, how, how you doing that? Like it's, it's totally different, bro. I think it's think the environment. Atlanta so you think it's different because you, you're on the ground? Yeah, I'm on the ground, my people. I'm right there in the field, man. <laughs> mm. I'm in the field. I see it. Like, you know, some people, they see the struggle from, like, Instagram or even family. But I see clients that's every day, bro, I need help. Like, I'm about to not get approved for this apartment. I need help. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it's still a business, though. How do you, mm. how do you balance making a profit, because it's business, mm -hmm. but really helping the people that need help? Oh, because I feel like if you're serious, you're investing yourself to get help. Mm. So I feel like a lot of people like let's say everybody let's say they bonus person got fifteen hundred this person got a fifteen hundred bonus this person take fifteen hundred bonus and he go buy Dior he buy some shoes this person take their fifteen hundred by yo Katie I want to get my credit fixed mm. Katie teach me mentorship you know what I'm saying that's the difference I think that's the people that I want to work with anyway because that person mindset not right he need a lot of coaching to help which is fine. But I want the person that's ready to invest in itself because they're going to take it much more seriously and they're going to be ready to change their life. But they also, I mean, <laughs> hate to do this, but we it was one of um, our church services with the pastor was talking about like they understand it, like understanding the value in heaven, right? That's why mm -hmm. we do what we do. Also, the second person understand the value in getting this credit fixed. That's why they want they they willing to pay that fifteen hundred because they they understand the value of it. The other person might not understand the value, so they're going to BS. They gonna, you know what I'm saying? They're going right. to take their time and then they're going to be broke forever. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's why it's my job online to push, hey, get your credit fixed. Do this. Hey, this is how I turn credit to cash. So like you can at least see it. So now like even a person spending the 1500 on some shoes, he at least know that is a different option. But you know that you're choosing to buy the liability. But, it's, mm. but, it's, but you know, as long as you know, because you heard the information. Right. If you don't know, then I can't really blame you. But you know. How do we? But even that, because we we push this, we push these liabilities so much, right? Right. You come in here dripped up. You got the you got the chain on. You got the bracelet on. You mm -hmm. got all these rings on. That's almost like you promoting a liability too, though. It's like, man, I want to look like Keith. Huh? I want to get the right. watch. I want to get the bust down with the rings. That's all good. that, and that's good. You should think like that. But I earned my way to this. Mm -hmm. You got to earn your way. And I talk about investment. I spent 
over fifty thousand dollars on mentorships, conferences, traveling. You know that thing don't cost it costs a lot of money to travel, go to conferences, and learn information. So what you see in me, I it's because I spent the money. So I already know that what this is the return on investment from what mm. I spent. If you're not willing to do what Keyson did and invest in yourself, then of course you're not gonna look like Keyson. Mm. It's like anybody in the gym. If I'm in the gym three years straight going hard. I pit that pain in to look like this. If you don't pit that pain in, you're never gonna look like that. Nah, facts. That's a fact. I mean, that's understanding the value. I think I was talking to Neo, and he was like, "Man, I, he was like, he think that's probably the most, the best thing he ever done was like self development." I think he was like, "Man, I spend more money in self development than anything." Mm-hmm. He was like, "Man, it's so much money because, like you said, man, you want you get the you get the knowledge, then you can teach it, right? Mm-hmm. Once you retain the knowledge, you learn it, you be able to teach it, right. you make more money." Right, so like, nah, that's a fact. That's why you always say like, oh, you you got too many gym memberships. Like, I spent over five hundred dollars a month in gym memberships alone. But that investment to, I'm paying it, so I, now I'm committed. Like, I know I got to go to these. Well, gyms. that's different, bro. You can't get, you get all that in one gym, bro. You can go to. No, you can't, bro. Like we said, pepper boxing is a hit workout. I'm punching a bag. Lifetime Fitness. That's like I'm just free weights gym. I go to the MMA gym. That's a fighting gym. Like it's different gyms for different things. You can't fight at Lifetime. <laughs> you can fight at Pepper. It's boxing. You know what I'm saying? The yeah, bag. but we're not hitting no. We're not hitting each other. So like, I don't know how to fight in a street fight if I never do a sparring because I'm only hitting the bag. I don't hit back. Okay. I, I guess. I don't know. It, 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 that's everybody got their own preference, but I just think that it go back to self development. I'm willing to spend the money so I can know how to do. I can fight. I can. <laughs> you know I fight. No, I'm saying, but like, not I fight at a different level now. I'm messing with you. I'm saying, but I'm saying, like, it's a different level. It's like everybody can fight, but like, can you really fight? Do you know how to jab? Do you know how to faint? Do you know how to take down? Do you know how to submit somebody? Like, it's levels. It's levels. It's levels. It's different levels, too. Anybody can get knocked out. We're not talking about fighting. It's different levels. You think you're going to come because you're strong? You're not fighting? You get knocked out, huh? <laughs> Chill out. Hey, man. That's my church, brother. I got to relax. <laughs> Yo, you, hey, you better go to gun training, too. Yeah, all right. Hey, that's what get, I'm get some gun training, too. That's what I'm saying. You, you want to keep working out, get big and small. All right. Yeah, all right. Yeah, funny. I got something for you. <laughs> Different level. Need to invest in some, some gun some gun ranges as well. Yeah, for sure. Definitely that, too. They invest in some hollow tips. <laughs> <laughs> but for real though, you, hey man, you gotta be trained out. Five hundred dollars drink. <laughs> <laughs> Just chill out. Hey, I'm yeah. that. <laughs> that's terrible. You just spent a thousand dollars on the gym. <laughs> All right, I spent five hundred on this piece one time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yo, shoot. Yo, I don't need a best no more. Yo, I'm ignorant, bro. Oh, yeah, bro. You're out of pocket. Yo, God forgive me. Oh, man. That's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. He's oh. a runner. He's a tr- All right. <laughs> yo, you're funny, bro. Ah, oh, man. I appreciate you for pulling up, man. This is great. Yo, so like, what else? I mean, okay, we going to train. Like, what else is going on with Keyson, man? You said you want, want people to know about you, man. What about you that you, you think that your audience haven't seen yet? I'm also... um. Doing more speaking events, man. Like, you know, I want to do podcasts, but I really want to start speaking on stage. So in 2019, corporately, I spoke on stage in front of like three to 5,000 corporate professionals. Mm. And I, I felt something different. Like after that, I was so scared when I first spoke on stage. But after like the amount of feedback and positivity I got after, like, I love that. So I feel like, I don't know if it's going to be this year, but like doing more public speaking events so I can really... Talk to the people, talk about credit, talk about cars, talk about whatever I want, cause it's my my voice. Um, I think I definitely want to do that, cause that feeling that I felt on stage, bro, like I never felt that ever since. Like it was really powerful. So I definitely want to get that one day. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. I think I'm rooting for you, cause like, you got the credentials. Like a lot of times, like a lot of people like myself, like we not saying I don't have the credentials, but we really had to go through the mud to get the training. Not saying you didn't. Yeah, yeah. I like yours because it's like. Nah, I, I don't know how to say it. I don't want to say it's not like yours is legit and mine is not. 
But I just love the fact that, like, nah, bro, like, you got best of both worlds, right? Mm-hmm. Like, me, I probably just got one side because I had to go through the fight, I had to learn all this by myself. Mm-hmm. Whereas, though, somebody that went to school, like, I respect it. Like, mm-hmm. most people don't. I feel like we need to start giving credit, more credit to people that went to school for things. We try to, like, I don't know, I feel like in the black community, we downplay the wrong stuff. Like, yeah. we be downplaying the wrong stuff. I just want to salute it for real. Nah, I appreciate it. I, I feel like that too. Um, But what, what, what I realize is that, like, I don't know, like even like we talk about um I think we talk about other like Cyrus, like he like been pro- promoting tech. And I'm like bro, he got yo, you bro, you gotta chill, bro. You making it hot. That's why a lot of him can't get jobs now, bro. Like, yeah, he definitely I making know it they hot. Hot. I know the company's looking at him, they follow him like the like FBI. They follow him, they go, like, okay, oh, oh, okay, he teaching them this. Oh. All right, better make it harder. Right. Okay, you gotta need another. That's why they ain't taking this one cert now. Cause of this nigga. It's cause of you. <laughs> make this a clip. <laughs> but the point, even though, yeah, he is wilding with that, but he still is promoting, like, yo, you cannot. You can make money in no, tech. Facts. You can re- actually work a job and make legal money, six figures, and be successful. So I'm kind of doing the same thing in the insurance space. Like, nah, Keyson's successful. Don't get it confused. But I can also do the corporate thing and be successful in that too. So now I can give... Because a lot of people like I go to Georgia State, University of Georgia that are in risk management programs that like they come and talk to me because they're like, yo, you know, you, you're doing your thing outside mm. of this insurance stuff. And I kind of want to always pour it back into them because like, hey, you can take this insurance money and invest in yourself and make more money. And I mm. think that's what it's all about, miss making money. Yo, is insurance, is that sales technically? Nah, it's like, it's like real like, so underwriting. So like this building, this, this apartment complex, like anything like residential needs insurance, right? So if they catch on fire, somebody got to cut the check. Right. I work to the, for the person that cuts the check. And I basically say, is this a good risk or not? It's an underwriter. So you heard like a mortgage underwriter, like, nah, you, your credit trash. I'm not, mm. not approving you. So I look at different risks and be like, I y'all got good um construction, like it won't burn as fast. Um, y'all got good like practices, y'all got sprinklers. All right, I'm gonna give you a quote, but it costs a hundred thousand mm. dollars. So that's so you don't I, get people insurance, not like that. Now nah, you people basically you, you I say you you want insurance, you go through a broker, then come to me. I'm the plug. I'll be like, nah, bro, he his I don't like his uh his risk. He too risky, I don't want him. Mm. So I'm the person that make that decision if you get insurance or not. I'm trying to get insurance on all this stuff I got in here, man. Yeah, you got to talk to a broker. You can't talk to me. Nah, you, 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 that's <laughs> below you. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that's, that's beneath me. <laughs> yeah, nah, for real, you really can't. Because you, you uh, sure can never go straight to the carrier's call. Like, you can't go all the way to the top. You got to go through the, the agent. Damn, bro. I might have to get insurance. Nah. Nah, it's, it's cool, nah, man. Nah, nah, like nah, I said. Nah, nah. <laughs> yeah, okay. I was joking. I was joking. I was joking. But nah, but it's still, it's still a cool gig that, you know, it still allow you to like just learn more about the global environment, global economy, mm. because everything's insured. Everything. Mm. And reinsured. <laughs> Yo, how close? I'm just curious. This is just for fun. Six and giggles. How close are you, you think? How close are you to your, uh, your mentor? Just curious. We won't have to say no names because you probably have different ones. Because mm. I know you be looking like, man, I'm on your ass. You know what I'm saying? I'm almost there. Nah, I, I got a lot. I got a lot of. I pit like I like shoot for like people that's like <laughs> way above me. So like you know, like they say, uh, aim for the stars. You, um, you reach the moon type vibes. Like I'm not. I'm not that close as I want to be. But mm. I, I think I'm. I'm gaining steadily good speed at my age. Mm. If they, like I don't think at their age they was doing what I was doing. So I think, you know, that's how I'm going to gauge it. Like, I can't gauge it, like, right now where they at. They might be 35, 40, you know what I'm saying, where they at. But I'm 27, so I got mm-hmm. a little little time. And I got the information earlier than they did, probably. But I think I think they would be happy at that because as a as a mentor, you want your mentee to Absolutely. slap you. Like, that's the goal. That's you what they, they always tell us. Like, yeah, I want you to do better than me. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So they give us everything we need to be better than them. It's just up to us on the execution of it. So mm-hmm. I feel like I have all the gems. I just got to continuously progress and get there. No, nah, facts, man. This is great, bro. I appreciate you for pulling up, man. Um, How do we follow you? How do we support you? How do we How do tap we get in. the consultant? How do we get, get all that? <laughs> man, tap me on IG at KD Consultant. That's K-D-C-O-N-S-U-L-T-I-N-G underscore KD Consultant. Tap on me on Instagram. Everywhere, man. You can find me. Um, I appreciate y'all for listening. I do fix credit. I have a mentorship. And just because I'm on this podcast, man... Anybody pit J Hill on a promo code, I'm gonna give them dollars off on the mentorship. So I appreciate appreciate y'all for watching and man, just tap in me, follow me, man. Just follow me and connect with me. I'm an open book and I love to teach and I love to just be with y'all. Like I said, I'm here on the ground with y'all. So we on the way up. No, nah, man, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. It's a good dude. Like like I'm um met a guy in church and 
man. He's just a good. He's a good dude, bro. I pre, I, and my man smell good. Pause. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like it's just, I just feel like yeah. it's something about how a guy present himself. You know what I'm saying? You could trust him. Like <laughs> you niggas come over here dusty and musty. I can't trust you. I'm nah, just saying, if you, you don't carry if you, yourself well, girl, if you musty, I can't trust you. <laughs> so I'm just saying, like you want to work with somebody that smell good. So that's a plus. What, what, whatever you take for that you take it, man. My God, man, I appreciate you, man. Oh uh, yeah, my Let's guy Keyshawn J Hill, J Hill podcast. It's a wrap. We out. That was good, bro.